in a TV ad put on by Citibank. They wanted to say thank you to their customers for using their credit card, so they started a rewards program where you could get cash back by using one of their cards. One of the ads caught my eye because I had to try to figure it out. Had two women in a grocery store. One put her hand on the other one's stomach and asked her when her baby was due. The other woman says to her, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Oops. Not knowing what else to say to the woman, she said, well, thank you. And with this simple thank you, this offended woman forgets the insulting words and the two ladies embrace. And then this slogan flashes across the scene. It said, it's amazing what a simple thank you can do. While it was an odd ad, it is amazing what a simple thank you can do. And who isn't somewhat disappointed when you do something for someone and they forget to say those two words? It happened to Jesus at least once that we know of. Here he is on his way to Jerusalem, traveling along the border of Samaria and Galilee. And he was going into a village, and ten men with leprosy uh, met him. They stood at a distance, which was required by law who had leprosy, and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to the priest, uh, said to them, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, a Samaritan, seeing that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself down at Jesus' feet and he said, Thank you. And Jesus asks him, Were not ten healed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give God praise except this foreigner? And then he said to the grateful Samaritan, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Where were the other nine? I think preachers and Sunday school teachers have tried to answer that question through the ages. Ten were healed. But only one bothered to write a thank you note. Where were the other nine? We just don't know. But I'm glad that you're here today, in God's house, on this first Sunday of our stewardship, and you're here saying thank you. Because it's important to say thank you, isn't it? I hope it's part of why you're here today. A genuine sense of gratitude for what God has done for you. And it's important to say thank you, whether to God or to others who have blessed your life. I remember a story in Guidepost quite a while back. Harry Tanksley told of a man who greatly influenced his life. The, last man, the man's last name was Tisdale. And during the week, Tisdale was a bus driver, but on Sundays, he taught Perry in his Sunday school class. He was a Sunday school teacher. At age 15, Perry Tanksley decides he's going to drop out of Sunday school. Figures nobody cares. Nobody will miss me, he assured himself. And so he was rather surprised a week or two later when Mr. Tisdale shows up at his house. <clears throat> Tanksley tries, even today, to think what made Mr. Tisdale visit and why it made such an impression upon him. Maybe he wrote, it was the concern on Mr. Tisdale's face that I wasn't there. Or maybe it was the fact that Mr. Tisdale had to walk a mile to tell him he was missed. Whatever it was, it apparently worked. Perry Tanksley returned to the Sunday school class and as an adult later became a well-known pastor. Twenty-five years later, Tanksley feels a strong urge to write a letter of appreciation to his old teacher. And in this letter he writes, Mr. Tisdale, had you not walked up that road today, that day and placed your hand on the shoulder of a discouraged boy who needed desperately to know that somebody cared, 
It well may be that I would not be a minister today. Thank you very much. A week later, Tisdale gets a reply, and it reads, Dear Perry, your letter came shortly after a near-fatal heart attack. Your words were better for me than a doctor's prescription. You see, I'd been reviewing my life and wondering if I'd done anything worthwhile. How glad and thankful I am that I walked that mile to win you back to the Sunday school. Your letter has brought me encouragement and comfort. It's important to say thank you, isn't it? <clears throat> Do you remember the TV show um, On the Road with Charles Kowalt? Remember that, some of you? In one of his broadcasts, Kowalt was in Moscow on Red Square. And an older gentleman with a chest full of medals approached him. And this older man was a Russian doctor during World War II, and, and he'd been captured by the Germans and put into a POW camp. The Germans were especially hard on Russian POWs. Americans in the same camp, even though they were separated, had an abundance of food in comparison. The Russians were only given a bowl of cold, thin turnip soup uh, once a day, and because of that, many of them had already died. And with tears streaming down his face, this Russian doctor tells Charles Kuralt about a group of American soldiers who risked their lives to smuggle food to the starving Russians. He wrote down their names the best he could remember them and asked Kuralt if he could find them. It was not an easy task. But Kuralt found each of the American soldiers who was still living and he arranged for a meeting. The old doctor was flown, of all places, to Phoenix, Arizona, to be reunited with the men who risked their lives to save him from starvation. And at the Phoenix airport, after 40 years, this Russian doctor saw his fellow captives and was finally able to say, thank you. It's important to say thank you. Jesus healed 10 men with leprosy. Only one returned to say thank you. And Jesus was disappointed. You know, it wasn't so much that he needed the gratitude. He certainly did not. But how could they be healed truly, physically and spiritually, if they didn't have a sense of gratitude in their hearts? I think that's why giving thanks is so important. God doesn't need our thanks, of course. God's all sufficient. God doesn't need anything. It's we who need to say thank you. A sense of gratitude is one of the surest signs of spiritual health. Saying thanks reminds us uh, that of all the things that we owe to God. It's so easy in our affluent culture to think that the blessings that we enjoy, we've earned by our own efforts. We forget the people who gave of themselves so that we might live in a land of plenty. Or we think of this wonderful church, its building and its people, and the <coughs> ministries that have affected our lives and the lives before us. It's all too easy to forget the God who is the source of all blessings. Rudyard Kipling brought this home in a very thoughtful way over a century ago. When Queen Victoria was celebrating 60 years as uh, on the British throne, the nation decided, the nation of England, of Britain, decided they were going to throw a party. Everyone turned out to celebrate. And the Parliament uh, commissioned Kipling, who was the greatest poet of his time, to write a national song. And they fully expected a song extolling the, the, the uh, splendor of the British Empire. Instead, Kipling's verse was called recessional. And each verse ended with this haunting frame, refrain. Lord, oh God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. It's so easy to forget. To forget the one who is the source of all of our blessings. And the more that we have, the more tempting it is to forget. That's the demonic thing about affluence. It causes us not only to feel entitled, but it causes us to look down upon those who have less than we have. If we had the heart of Christ, that's the last thing we would do. 
Rather, our sentiments would be like those expressed by this unknown author. He writes, or she writes, I don't know. Even though I clutch my blanket and growl when the alarm rings, thank you, Lord, that I can hear. There are many who are deaf. Even though I keep my eyes closed against the morning light as long as possible, thank you, Lord, that I can see. Many are blind. Even though I huddle in my bed and put off rising, thank you, Lord, that I have the strength to rise. There are many who are bedridden. Even though the first hour of my days is hectic, when socks are lost and toast is burned and tempers are short and my children are so loud, thank you, Lord, for my family. There are many who are alone. And even though our breakfast table never looks like the pictures in magazines, and the menu is at, at time unbalanced, thank you, Lord, for the food we have. There are so many that go hungry. And even though the routine of my job is often monotonous, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to work. There are many who have no job. Even though I grumble and bemoan my fate from day to day and wish my circumstances were not so modest, thank you, Lord, the Lord of life. We do need to remind ourselves that God is the source of everything that is. And when we say thank you, it's a reminder of the one who is the source of all. And of course, I think the best way to express our appreciation of God is by an act of kindness. By doing something God would do. Being thankful is what being thankful does. And we can show our thankfulness by acts of thankfulness. There's a book called Try Giving Yourself Away by a guy named Dunn, who tells about a, a, a woman in the lobby of the Union Depot in Cincinnati, Ohio, several years ago, waiting for a train. She sees this young girl, about 15 years old, sitting alone in the depot. And as she watched, this mother with two children and an armload of packages enters the station and sits across from the girl. Before the mother could even get settled in her seat, the teenager went over to her and said, can I take care of your two children while you go get something to eat? You look tired, the next train's due in a while. Why don't you let me help you? I'm very good with children. Now, in today's world, the mother would be very suspicious, but this was back in a simpler, less violent time. And the startled mother said, oh, thank you, that would be wonderful. And she left the two little girls in the care of this anonymous young babysitter. <coughs> And a little later, she returned, relaxed, and refreshed. Thank you so much. Are you catching the next train? The teenager said. Yes, she replied, as soon as I get all this together. Well, let me help you, said the young girl. And she gathered up all the ladies' packages, and they headed together to the train. And as they boarded, she waved at them and said goodbye. And then she went back to the lobby and sat down. She wasn't seated more than ten minutes when she spotted another mother with children. She asked over, she walked over and volunteered to babysit again. And after a while, that mother boarded the train, and then this little drifting helper found another mother, and she did the same thing. By this time, the observer was puzzled, and she went over to the youth. She said, I'm curious, I've been watching you for about an hour or so, and you've spent the entire time helping these young mothers and their children. Why are you doing this? Oh, she said, I was one of five children. My dad was in the army, we were always moving. My mother got so tired of carrying packages and suitcases and caring for all of us. I remember one day she said to me, you're so good with children. And then my dad went to war and never came back. And that left my mom alone and just recently she died. So I thought that maybe I could do something for others in her memory because she said I was so good with kids. I thought there'd be lots of mothers who would be tired here. So I come here often to the depot it makes me feel good doing it for her. It really helps. That young lady was expressing gratitude for her own mother by assisting other women struggling with their responsibilities. It's important to say thank you. It reminds us that everything we have is a gift from God, but of course it's also best to say thank you to God by doing something for others, something for God's children. And often we can do this best by doing it through the church. How about you? Is there someone you need to thank? Is there someone to whom you could show uh, kindness and show the gratitude of God?
Can you prayerfully show your gratitude for giving to the church and its future? It's important to say thank you. Amen.